Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another uh, TV recap uh, here from Breaking the 180. If uh, you tuned in recently, you know we, we're currently binging the new season of True Detective, this time with the subhead of Night Country. Yes. Uh, in our Breaking It Live series, kind of a, a new thing for 2024 is adding TV for our roster. Um, we have the first two episodes up on our YouTube channel already, where we just give some general thoughts about those episodes, as well as how it fits into the overall anthology. So we're not going to go over that stuff again. We're just going to jump right into episodes three and four. Uh, which, of course, will be airing uh, within the next two weeks. So it's kind of a treat for you guys tuning in, because we're giving you a bit of a, of a preview of what to expect. Uh, for the rest of this season, and what is already uh, one of HBO's uh, real first uh, hits of 2024. It really is the the first really good show that they're putting out uh, this year, and it's long overdue for fans of this particular series because it's five years after the last season. But we talked about that in the last episode, so to jump into episodes uh, three and four, this this is the moment where the season hits that halfway point that and really picks up its stride. The characters have all been introduced, and without spoiling too much, we'll just say this time it takes on almost like a a really great H.P. Lovecraftian uh, it, vibe. It has, right? it has yeah, hints yeah. of that for sure, but we'll get into that in a little bit. But but first and foremost, I think we're really hits its stride in particular is the human element. Yeah. I know the first season of True Detective was was very much known for that. That's that's one of the things that really clicked with people. And these two episodes we saw today did something very special with the characters. You really they kind of exposed themselves. They really let their insecurities and fears really uh, hang out. You kind of see them at their lowest point so far. I don't know how much that downward slope will go, but the yeah. performances are really outstanding. Um, yeah, Jodie Foster is in this one. Um, you know, I've seen a couple of reviewers already compare her to a kind of a middle-aged version of her uh, Clary Starling from Silence of the Lambs, and uh, of course, but it's two completely different stories. But here, you get that sense uh, even more in these two episodes of uh, a an investigator, a police chief who's really processing her demons through her work. And in these two episodes, we really get a sense even more of the loneliness of the characters and how they're in this secluded, isolated world and this case of the missing scientists connected to the missing indigenous activists is starting to also force them all to boil over and kind of confront uh, personal, let's say, trials and scars that they haven't, they just haven't been able to get over. And now the case is bringing all that to a, to a head. And that's why we want to give particular emphasis to this amazing, amazing actress, Kelly Reese. Uh, who really impressed she, in these two episodes. We were we were kind of blown away. Her yeah. performance, particularly in episode four, is pretty spectacular. She goes through a whole range of anger, of sadness, grief, all those things in in ways that and I and I think this is why the performance is so good. We all would react the way she does to what happens in the episode. Uh, this is a Breaking It Live, so we're not going to spoil it, and we'd only spoil it if it was really bad, uh, which it's not, thank goodness. But, I'll just um, say, uh, one spoiler I'll put out there that ruins nothing is she loses a tooth. She lo Yes. <laughs> but that, that doesn't spoil anything. No, no, But no. it's an astounding performance. To think she started off as a boxer, as a professional boxer, uh, talk about true multi-talent. Uh, um, but but from yeah. everyone too, and I think 
I think what you really hit on, and and it this applies to both episodes, but you you see the boiling point in episode four is how this sense of loneliness really impacts the characters in in, in diff- different ways. And we're not talking about loneliness necessarily as being alone. Some of these characters have families. Um, there's a rookie at the police station who has a wife and kid, and um, Jodie Foster's character keeps like exploiting him. So he he kind of feels alone in the sense that he he's not quite with his family. He's not quite being. He's not quite respected by the police chief. Well, because he's very young, right? He's yeah. he, She makes a, a point about how young he is, and because you get a sense this is a world where people have to find their their place and their their stride. Uh, very early because it's so it's such an isolated corner of the world everyone gets married very early in his case he's he's got this young wife and kid and in these two episodes you really start seeing his marriage start to also hit uh, a certain boiling point but you know i don't know if i would call the relationship exploitative i almost feel and they reveal a little more of this in these two episodes i almost feel like johnny foster's character also uses him in a way to fill in the kind of maternal void. You know, it's mm. almost like she's she's taking it, she's taking on a, a kind of professional slash motherly role uh, with him. And that she might not even realize, consciously yeah, yeah, realize. Yeah. Yeah. But it's coming out in her the expression of that void is off putting to everybody. Yes. Um her police captain played by Christopher Eccleston tells her like no one likes you like no one wants to work with you like even, do yeah. do you do you realize this uh, uh, yeah cuz there's this great scene again spoils nothing where they have uh, one of those nice expository conversations where you learn that, a little that's more it's so good that you don't realize it's expository because of the performances and the writing so huge kudos it's, to it gives, that. gives you a nice little wind into why she was sent to this uh to ennis alaska um what her relationship with this captain really is all about and why yeah why she herself is is always just getting on everyone's nerves because you know this time we see it even more and more that people are kind of starting to rebel against her except um for navarro played by reese uh, as the season progresses they're trying to depend more and more on each other and, and have some really great conversations yeah. um they they have two kind of intimate conver- uh, uh dialogue scenes driving to locations and there's one where they talk about their relationship with religion but specifically with with prayer and when they use it and for what for what means and i think that's that's a bit of the heart of the subtext or not even the mm-hmm. subtext but one of the themes of the show is you know belief in i guess the other otherworldly i i would say the especially well the clash between uh, the starkness of life and the need to hold on to some mm. kind of belief system. And in the case of Navarro, it connects to to her identity. Uh, there's a great moment in these two episodes where they go speak to a, a potential lead uh, in the case. And, you know, it's a great moment. Uh, again, no spoilers, but it's a great moment where he he brings up the fact that she's going around using a non-indigenous name and he's like no what's your and he's indigenous the, the lead there is so, and he's like well, yes. but what's your real name and as we find and, out because i think on our last breaking it live yeah. i said inuit and here they specifically mentioned that in this area of alaska they're inupiaq yeah so uh a reese her character navarro is is half inupiaq and she also uh gets a little bit into the backstory on on why she's uh why she's here where she came from how she um, grew up and there, wh- there's a lot i noticed in the show about not only absent parents but abusive figureheads well yeah this idea that um the the rough hardened exterior of a lot of people is shaped by uh having to 
having learned early on in life to build that hard exterior yeah because of circumstances at home because of because of abusive situations because of violence they witnessed and in navarro's case you also sense a clash of identity where she 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 almost you know it really clings to the the indigenous belief system or the cosmology of the local indigenous community also as a way to just stay in touch with this identity that's kind of been half robbed from her which is also a, a running theme with Jodie Foster's daughter because yes. and in this one we see that also start to boil over because her daughter's getting involved with these uh environmentalist groups that are protesting the local mining industry and one way Jodie Foster tries to keep her from getting to involved in that is also not allowing her to get uh indigenous tattoos or markings on her body almost as if she's afraid that that uh, you know the way her daughter will be ostracized or judged by the the you know the local dominant white community absolutely and it, and what's so interesting about uh foster's performance in that regard and we saw it in the first two episodes it's a very visceral reaction yeah and we learn a little bit more about her own family situation just hints at it that there was obviously a traumatic event that happened but we still haven't learned exactly why why she has such a specific reaction to her stepdaughter getting these uh tattoos because she has love for her she feels protective of her but you can also sense as you said that kind of half in half out yeah. she won't fully i don't know uh, uh, give give into being a, her mother yes um yeah you really you really feel that everyone here is battling almost uh <laughs> different loyalties and i identities within themselves same with the young deputy you know he's kind of juggling the the situation at home with his young wife and his commitment to the job right and his father played yes. by john hawks who he uh he goes through it in this episode <laughs> let's just let's just say uh i've never seen a sadder shot in a tv show as someone standing by an airplane before well if you were watching the previous two episodes if you, if you saw them you know there's a running storyline about him waiting for a, a mail order eastern european bride basically and we we get some kind of answer to to some kind of resolution to that in these two episodes that's you know again we we don't want to give it away but it is yeah it's it's you feel for the guy he he's he's a bit of a jerk and you and and you dislike him in many moments in the show but the way things culminate in these two episodes you <laughs> you feel you feel for him uh, well, so when uh, he gives his son, so his son is the the rookie deputy. Yes. So they both work together, and there's a scene where John Hawks, uh, the father, gives his son some ice skates so yes. he can give it to his son, and there's you you feel that sense of disconnect. So we're also waiting to learn exactly what led to this strained relationship. Um, but it, you, that sense of wanting to be present and wanting to heal, but in this isolated town uh, of people not knowing how to express these feelings in healthy ways and, and tackle them in healthy ways. People either bury their head in the sand, bury their head uh, in their work, bury their head in um, belief, bury their head in alcohol. Well, it's tricky because everyone knows each other, so that even that's makes it the other more, problem. Yes, uh, it's such a it, it's it's hard to fathom any way of really escaping from this world. And then, well, for example, right there, there are scenes when they need to interview a suspect or get some information from a geologist. Except one of the characters slept with his wife in the past. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and well, you can tell those those wounds have not healed well, even remotely there's too many personal histories in this place uh and and then it all is weaved so wonderfully uh with the more uh plot driven and striking revelations near the end of 
of the third episode of the fourth episode in particular um where we really start seeing uh again it will we'll tiptoe around it but the story starts taking on more gothic uh uh you know spooky dimensions that those words don't do it justice because because it's one of those nice shows where it really keeps its its cards close. It really plays the cards close to the chest. Like we yes. really don't. I mean, there's no. There's some nice ambiguity in yeah. the visual language. There yeah. were even points when I paused the show and I said, "Oh, it's interesting how the show did that." And Alcy said, "No, but actually, no. I I think it's because they did went in this direction." Again, we're being vague because that kind of gives away what's yes. going on. But it... but but I like that because in the way you read it, it could be seen as one or the other and you do and that's which was if you saw the first season that's uh, uh that was kind of the nice thing about it where the the charm of it was it started off also as like this this combination of of something like mind hunter but with but with a more um gothic and at times mystical air to it woody harrelson and matthew mcconaughey like like these two actresses here are playing two two different personalities. McConaughey is like this strange uh, uh, persona who talks in very lyrical, uh, transcendental language, and so you think it's building up probably to some kind of crazy supernatural revelation. And I I won't ruin it. We haven't seen season one, but let's just say it ends in a way that is both down to earth but also surreal. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a very... Uh, and this one is going in that direction. And before and, we close off... Oh, well, no, something else that we need to talk about, and I mentioned it briefly in the first two episodes, is the, the actual the viewpoint and the direction. Uh, Isa Lopez, yes, the showrunner. Yeah, yeah. lot The way that the women are framed the way that they're written the way the subtle glances and looks and reactions to each other you can get the sense even if you didn't know it was she the showrunner was a woman there's a sensitivity in the craft that is really beautiful for example episode three the way that it opens and this is call it a spoiler it's not really it opens you see a birth and the the just the way that it's it's shot, it just feels like someone who knows what has, what that's like. What has a, a particular sensibility where the male gaze is brushed aside, which is really nice in a show that's part of a genre that tends to be associated with very with a lot of male gazing and a lot of macho uh, strutting, and you don't get. Um, you don't get that in this series, even though it is like a he's a hard boiled uh, detective Absolutely. story. Absolutely, but it's got that interesting sensitive that sensibility and sensitivity, oh, both and some, of them. And with the two leads, of course, the way they're written. Well, um, for example, they're not just quote unquote strong as a as a as a superficial attempt to try to present strong female characters. No, you, they they these these feel like impacted driven haunted individuals Fly. yeah well you know for example there is uh they do tackle uh, mental health and suicide in the show and one of the characters we won't spoil we won't mention names the way that this particular character interacts with our two leads jody foster and reese it's very beautiful and and again, you get the sense the way that these interactions are staged and framed. There there is, I don't know, just a sense of understanding, and I think it 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 just adds these really wonderful human layers to a story that, for all intents and purposes, is quite bleak. Yeah, it's it's a it's a great show. It's it's um. These, these it's two intelligent, episodes, stylish, and and great, and these two episodes really hit a great narrative peak. I mean, we were we were hooked. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the I believe the third episode, the credits, the opening credits, don't roll until about fifteen minutes in, at least. And you, you 
No, the painting like is spot on. It's it's just it's so beautifully paced. Um and beautifully shot. It's just I really the direction that these two episodes were taken, both advancing the plot, but also fleshing out the human characters, because they're flawed. Yeah. They're so human and they feel so yeah. real. We are these people. We relate to these people. Well, it's almost like great literature. It's very it's a very literary show, uh, which was a lot of the praise the first season got, and this one really finds that that stride again. So yeah, definitely can't wait to see where the the finale goes, where the the what madness is are is <laughs> revealed. Because again, yeah. we're not sure if the madness in the HP Lovecraft sense is literally real yeah. or apparitions, or we question what what the things people see, what things are real and what things are induced or part of some larger uh, mental health issues we we don't know yet and the fact that we're we're still debating it and we probably will after we finish rolling is a testament to how well the show is put together oh it, it's fantastic stuff um well everyone that's our recap of episodes uh three and four of true detective night country um stay tuned for next week when we recap um Private is that the end of it? Five and six. I don't know how many <laughs> let's, episodes let's this season has, we'll but five and six for sure. We might have three more to go, I think. But but I think. But um, that is our, our recap for it. And we hope you join us for uh, everything else that we got coming up soon. We've got some Dewey Recommends coming your way. We've got um, our last episode of The Chronicles of Man. Uh, and we have a lot more, a lot more. Cause honestly, it's kind of a slow movie season anyway. So, uh, it's the way that year always begins, but whatever is really, you know, worth chatting about, we're going to bring it to you. Uh, until then keep tuning into a uh, night country, leave us your comments, your likes, and your speculation, your speculation. For, wh for where yeah. the show will go, where it's going. And, uh, we will see you all soon. Peace everybody. Yeah.